Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm David Chilkin, the Secretary of Veteran Affairs, and I just wanted to give you an update. It's been a very busy summer for veterans and for us at the Veterans Administration. As you know, in June, the President signed the VA Accountability and Whistleblower Protection Act. Last Saturday, the President signed the VA Choice and Quality Employment Act. And today, I just came from a signing where the President signed a new bill, the GI Forever Act. Uh, this is an important act for veterans and for the country. It does several things. First of all, it eliminates the 15-year period after service that a veteran can use their benefits to get education. That's why it's called the GI Forever Act. Secondly, it provides benefits to veterans who have earned a Purple Heart. So if they were injured in service, they can now get their GI benefits, even if they didn't have their, their time in service due to their injury. The third thing that it does is if a public university uh, or uh, a commercial university closes, it allows the veteran to be able to continue to use their GI benefits so that we're not keeping a veteran from going on and earning their education. And finally, if a active service member is killed in duty, they are able now to transfer those benefits, the post 9-11 benefits, to a eligible dependent. So this is expanding our ability to support our veterans in getting education. Already, we've had 1.7 million individuals take advantage of the post 9-11 GI Bill. We hope that many more now will. We've spent more than $75 billion in the post 9-11 GI Bill to support veterans and their dependents. And so this continues to be good news. This is another example of bipartisan support that brought us this GI Bill. So I want to thank members of Congress. I want to thank our veteran service organizations. And I want to thank the President for his continued support on these types of legislative initiatives and executive initiatives. Uh, I'd be glad to take any questions about the GI Bill. Well, uh, while I do serve uh, the President as the Secretary of VA, um, I think I don't speak for the President. I think the President has done a good job of speaking for himself. He's made clear his comments. He's denounced bigotry, hatred, violence, Nazis, white supremacists, and I think that he can speak for himself. I uh, do feel, as an American and, and as a member of the Cabinet, that I can speak for my own personal opinions on this. And I am outraged by the behavior that I've seen with the Nazis and the white supremacists. I am outraged on the use of violence to be able to put one's ideals uh, and force them upon others. Um, representing the VA as Secretary of VA, I have the honor of representing this country's veterans. These are people who put their lives on the line to be able to support American ideals. Just today here in New Jersey, I was at the VA not far from here. I met with uh, a man named Frank Gamow, a 94-year-old who was there on D-Day in World War II. And, you know, he lost a lot of comrades, he told me, who on that day in D-Day. And they were fighting for what America stands for. They were fighting the Nazis. And it is a dishonor to our country's veterans to allow the Nazis and the white supremacists to go unchallenged, uh, and I am strongly against them, uh, and I believe that we have to all speak up as Americans. As I said, I'm not going to speak for President Trump. Uh, I think that he has been very clear that this was not acceptable to him, uh, that he has denounced them. I can tell you I was with President Trump on Saturday, as these events were unfolding, he was upset, he was outraged, he wanted to make sure that he had the facts before he went out there and got them. I know that after Saturday he was able to sit down with 
the attorney general and the director of the FBI to get the facts, and that's why he made his second statements where he did come out after he got the facts. So I'm not, I'm not able to critique. Uh, that's your job in the press to make those critiques, but uh, I can tell you how I feel, and uh, I, am, I am completely outraged by this type of behavior. Well, you know, as I said, you know, I think that he has had um, ample opportunity to express his views on that, and I'm not in a position to, to critique that. I think he's been clear that this is totally unacceptable. The use of violence uh, is unacceptable and hatred and bigotry, and it's time for this country to come together and heal. And I think there is strong consensus. We've heard from the vice president. We've heard from the um, you know, chiefs of staff, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, we've heard from Ivanka Trump, we've heard from many leaders throughout the country. This country believes in American ideals. Uh, we need to come together, and I feel that that's what our next step is to begin to heal. Yes, sir. Speaking for yourself, Madam Secretary, do you see, did you see rally organizers and the counter-protesters as equally responsible for that violence? And did you see that there was bad on both sides? Um, I, I am not going to in any way uh, condone the behavior or the beliefs of the Nazis or white supremacists. Um, this is an affront to American ideals. This is an affront to civilization. We have spent, we cannot go back in history. We have fought against these, these beliefs and we're not going to allow ourselves as a country to be drawn back there. Um, so, no, I, I, I believe that um, this clearly cannot be tolerated, these types of behaviors. I'm asking you to compare the two groups then. Did you see them as equally responsible for the violence? You know, I, I, I'm not, I didn't look at the uh, tapes in order to make, uh, you know, equal, equal comments. I think that um, the behaviors of the white supremacists and Nazis have no place in American civil discourse, and I believe that Americans should be speaking out against that. I am not in favor of violence in any form, and we certainly don't want to see that, but we can't tolerate staying silent. Yes? Did you talk to the president about that today when you saw him for the signing? Did you make known your feelings about this? Did you discuss the Charlottesville violence in his comments yesterday? Uh, we talked about veterans' issues, and we, and we talked about the progress that we're going to be able to go forward with in terms of the GI Bill, and we talked about future legislation. I think the president understands, and I think he knows I understand how he feels about this, that, that we, neither of us, are supportive of this type of hatred, bigotry, and the use of violence. So, uh, you know, that's a, that's a clear understanding. As I said, we were together on Saturday. Um, you said a little bit ago that it was important to stand up yes. to, to Nazis, to racists, et cetera. And, and yet the people who the president partially blamed yesterday were doing exactly that. They were standing up to the Nazis. And so I'm wondering, if, if, did this at all come up in your discussion with the president? Did you say, Mr. President, I think you were wrong about this? Or did you have any sort of discussion? No, the, pres the president and I didn't have a discussion about that. I think that um, the president expressed his view that violence is not acceptable. But I do believe the president believes that all Americans should stand up for what they believe in and stand up against bigotry and hatred. And um, you know, I, I strongly believe that. And I believe history teaches us that if we don't do that, that we're going to get ourselves down a road that isn't consistent with what America stands for. Well, the president and I talked about veterans' issues, and the, and the president is passionate about doing better for them, and I think that he was pleased to be able to make additional progress, and we were focused on, on that issue. As I said, we didn't talk about anything else besides how this was going to help veterans. And did you say that it was $75 billion that We have spent more than $75 billion in the post-9-11 GI Bill and this will give us additional ability to support education in the United States. Yes? Um, I'm just going to ask in another way. As a Jewish American in the cabinet, uh, and you're not the only one, do you feel responsibility to speak out 
because of your heritage in particular? Do you think that other uh, Jewish Americans in the cabinet and in your position in this administration are concerned about the approach that the president has taken thus far? Well, I'm speaking out and I'm giving my personal opinions as an American and as a Jewish American. And for me in particular, um, I think in learning history that we know that staying silent on these issues is simply not acceptable. In fact, in the Holocaust Museum, something that has impacted me is a poem that I recall that was written by a German pastor, Martin Nimmeram, who right after World War II, he was, he was essentially a anti-Nazi German, who talked about, he said, first they came for the socialists and I did not speak out. Then they came for the trade unionists and I wasn't a trade unionist, so I didn't speak out. Then they came for the Jews. I wasn't a Jew, so I didn't speak out. Then they came for me and there was no one to speak out for me. So it's important that we all express our opinions about this. And when we're outraged, we have to stand up for what we believe. So I do feel an obligation as an American, and um, I will continue to speak out for the things that I think are important. One more question. Uh, just shifting topics slightly, is there any update on the transgender military ban and, and how that would work and how that would affect the veteran population? Well, uh, I've, been, I've been clear on this issue that these are Department of Defense policies. If the Department of Defense changes their policies, uh, that will not impact the VA. The VA is there to care for anybody who has honorably served their country, and when they come to us as veterans, our commitment is to be with them for the rest of their life. We will respect with dignity whoever is a veteran, and we will continue to care for all veterans with the dignity that they deserve because they've stood up for our country. And so we will continue to offer support for transgender veterans. Thank you very much. All right, folks, thank you very much for joining us and choosing us as your stream of choice. Uh, make sure that if you are new, uh, if you would like to join our, our family, our community, you subscribe. Also, if you've been uh, a part of the community for a while, YouTube has been unsubscribing people for no reason. So check if you're still subscribed and the notification bell is still on. And uh, that way you get a heads up when we go live later on today if there is anything or tomorrow for the State Department press briefing. If you missed any of our previous videos from earlier, make sure you go and check them out on our channel. Uh, also, check out our website for news at goldenstatetimes.com slash news. Again, that's goldenstatetimes.com slash news. Um, just like all the other people that have been coming out, speaking out like um, like Diamond and Silk and, and others, we have been completely demonetized on most of our videos too. Um, it just happened today. It happened on our last stream. I showed it on our last stream where we have been completely demonetized. So um, we're trying to figure out how we can continue, how we can continue operations. So I'll be putting out a news video later on today regarding this issue. So if you guys can help out, that'll be amazing to continue uh, being on air. So, um, so yeah, folks, thank you very much, everyone, and I'll see you soon. Peace.